नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग या फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू डायरेक्ट टैक्सेशन क्लासेस द फर्स्ट बैच ऑफ द न्यू स्कीम न्यू सिलेबस एंड ऑफ कोर्स द फर्स्ट बैच ऑफ असेसमेंट ईयर ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी फाइव okay to a larger extent uh, uh, those who are writing in now but also will have a relaxed batch because they are not going to have a budget in feb uh, election year so it will only be an vote on account so uh, the budget will be somewhere in after the elections are over so should be july or august which time uh, it will not be applicable for uh, your november examination so in that manner also november students can relax a bit uh, Uh, whether they will have too many amendments or too many things or too many, of course, notifications and surplus. That that part of it we can look into it. And then uh, <clears throat> uh, I have a couple of instructions before uh, uh, going into the classroom, uh, just to uh, make you understand how the classrooms are going to progress and what are all the things uh, uh, look to look for and uh, uh, what needs to be done. Well. Uh, I picked up the. Uh, I initially thought the classes should start somewhere in mid October. Then, then some people told me that uh, uh, I believe uh, nowadays October thirty first is becoming very difficult for you in your offices. Okay, so people told me after October thirty first. After some people who wrote uh, Group One told me that after Group One examination. So we picked this date. So the classes are going to be on five days a week. Okay, so. literally uh, it, if i start from monday monday wednesday friday saturday sunday five days a week and uh, in a week approximately some 16 17 hours of classes so uh, if you look at it some 12 weeks totally that is what uh, we are planning to have i'm taking a feb 29th uh, uh, time limit for completion because of two three reasons one obviously the weather in this season is going to be very difficult if at all we are not able to make up that's why I, the first instruction i posted is to ensure that you if there is a heavy rain uh, to ensure that uh, you are checking on the whatsapp uh, before starting from home and my dear online students also please uh, uh, in the morning check uh, uh, for if at all there is a heavy rain and suppose if there are some normal losses suppose on any day i am unable to take that's why i kept a a uh, broader guideline of uh, feb 29 it will not go till that time we will be able to complete well before that <clears throat> as i had instructed uh, i am reworking the complete material uh, there is there are some small nuances which the institutes had had that small small amendments sometime uh, for example uh, in my inter material uh, i am very honest to you in my inter material i missed only one amendment that is a uh, the uh, leave encashment has been increased from 3 lakhs to 25 lakhs there is no purpose of increasing that or gratuity increase paninda or some other thing if you have increased the it would have leave encashment somebody receiving 25 lakhs which means the unavail leave should be his uh, entire service period also would not be uh, okay but something like that so i don't want to miss out on small nuances and the circular so uh before uh, on or before december 1st you will get the uh, material uh, the printed material till that time we will go with this handout okay when i give the printed material also i will also give you the e version of the printed material so that uh, i'll tell you how to use the material also when you are using the e version of the material this is a uh, second thing uh, and also i am covering the november examination questions okay uh, making uh, wherever necessary that small changes of uh, not only just the year but also any new provisions because uh, normally may examination will be full of amendments uh, almost all the amendments and whatever is the leftover amendments will be covered in the november examination so i am ensuring that if at all there is an amendment how to incorporate into the november examination question and check it out that's what we are going to do uh, in the classroom okay and uh, <clears throat> apart from the uh, material apart from your notebook ensure i will ensure that your uh, study material is fully covered in the um, uh, in our uh, questions itself no no question will be left from study material because i know its importance and also the new study materials released has 
more arenas like the same chapter but reworked in a different fashion so that will also be taken into account so be sure about that part also <clears throat> well how we are going to uh, approach the classes i will just give you a broader guideline just to make you uh, you just have to listen as to how i am going to approach the whole uh, classes my intention uh, is to start apart from today's introduction class okay my intention is to start with pgbp okay my intention is to start with pgbp proceed to capital gains proceed to ifos these three are the standalone income heads we will be seeing standalone income heads we will be staying on these things because there are standalone questions trust me in the new material there is no salaries chapter ihp chapter it is there as part of interaction that's all which means institute itself is telling us that this is the uh, uh, the the focus is more on the second part because salaries house properties are covered more in the inter part of it and uh, uh, once you go to your articles office and start your practical training you will uh, you will definitely understand the house property which we study theoretically and practically are different so they also understood that uh, okay we cannot play around with that so they said that let's keep it away so this is after this we will go to all the types of assessment okay i will be starting from firm company and okay and then the charitable trust then the individual then the cooperative societies we will be completing these things which will constitute somewhere around 50 percent of our paper with the completing all the assessments we will be completing 50 percent of our paper okay and then we move on to the next level of chapters which will be tds tcs which will be some six to eight marks of uh, uh, definitely uh, six marks not more than eight marks then go to assessment procedures then go to assessment procedures penalties all these things which will constitute the remaining 15 marks okay so this will be 50 marks this will be some 8 marks and this will be the balance marks that will be allotted to us with that we will be completing the direct taxation part of it and then move on to international taxation which is a 30 mark arena while doing international taxation i will tell you how the split is previously in the old material and all you will see the first chapter as transfer pricing which has been extensively covered but this time they changed the first chapter is non-resident taxation which is what is extensively covered okay uh, the non-resident taxation part is very high transfer pricing the same thing is retained but not uh, as much as it was there in the previous ones and then of course double taxation avoidance agreement advance rulings uh, Debts and the interpretation of statutes, etc., <clears throat> and the inter and there is a extra aspect of international taxation and its uh, interpretation. So all these things we will cover. So international taxation we will deal with it separately, and I will give you an introduction about that separately. So this is how our classrooms are, are is going to progress. Apart from the introduction today, we will be directly starting with PGBP our institute material also now is after introduction directly pgpp they are also not uh, uh, starting with salaries house property chapter is being slowly taken off part of various arenas they added which is what is the right thing to do at the final level also though i believe that salary should give, be given enough all certain then the largest number of taxpayers is salary may not be in terms of collection but the largest number of taxpayers is salary so salary should be given importance we will give the due importance especially when we are going to study assessment of individuals i will color, cover the throughout the salaries and house property chapters and small chapters like uh, clubbing set off all these things we will be covering over there am i clear to you my dear friends okay so that's how the classes are framed <clears throat> 6 to 9 30 is the classes i understand one or two texted me that saying 
930 will be little difficult because of office. So that's why I said Saturday, Sundays we can go up to 930. Uh, weekdays, if you are uh, no, if you are having office, I'm I'm okay with six to nine. That's why I said somewhere around we'll be covering some sixteen hours of classes. So I uh, that that part of it I will uh, definitely consider all of you. But one advantage we have is a smaller batch, deeper discussion, easier understanding. So that will help us to uh, move forward with uh, better confidence. Okay, and then. Whatever is the amendments, whatever is the notification, we will cover. Apart from that, after the class, if there are some amendments, if there are some things released, I will do it along with the revision sessions that, that should happen somewhere for the month, for the May exam, somewhere in the month of March. At that time, I will cover you these uh, amendments, whichever we have missed out in the classroom or which is not part of material, which the institute releases it later or any circulars that we will cover during the revision sessions because for example for rfa there is a notification awaited uh, rent free accommodation valuation in the budget they said that there will be a change on rent free accommodation but the notification has not yet been released by the cbdt if at all during the classroom they release we will uh, uh, see that or if at all it is released after that we will check it uh, when we are doing it, when we are doing the revision sessions Am I clear to you? So this is how the classes are going to uh, progress. Yeah, online friends, I have put the handout on the uh, WhatsApp. Uh, uh, you can just check it out. Uh, and if you want a copy of it while traveling this side, if you are if you are in Chennai and traveling this side, you can collect it from the institute itself. If you need a, a physical copy of it, otherwise you can use this. Right. So I would also, uh, it, it will be uh, just a formality statement, but it is not in any way the formality statement. Okay, I would, after doing this, I would definitely tell you that 60 plus is very much possible in our uh, direct taxation paper. 60 plus is very much possible in our direct taxation paper because from our international taxation, if we are able to target 25, which is very much possible the other part becomes all the more easy but even if you target 20 out of the remaining 70 40 scoring is not going to be difficult so 60 plus is very much possible and i would also tell you that uh, uh, this uh, again is my uh, and i need to prove it also that it is always believed that this is the most voluminous paper but it, I would also tell you, yeah, it is in a level voluminous, but it is uh, to a larger extent, we can understand where from the institute picks the question. What are all the areas of focus for the institute? Okay, what they expect the student to understand or what they to expect the student to be a uh, little uh, comfortable with. So that areas are very clear including the case laws, including everything, that areas are very clear. So even though people say it's a voluminous paper, it might be looking voluminous, but we can easily understand where from the institute is picking questions. So that part of it also being little friendly from our institute end. So scoring 60 plus in this paper is not very difficult. And whether uh, uh, you agree it now or at the end of the sessions, okay, this is the most interesting paper. Okay. I'm, I am I don't know uh, the other five papers. Okay. Uh, but to a larger extent, I can tell you this is the most interesting paper. It will be like a story to read, uh, not any anywhere difficult. Well, 
this is a law this is absolutely a law and it has its own interpretation standards it has its own uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call as uh, uh, guidelines to study for every law there are some guidelines to study for our income tax law also there are some guidelines to say study and fundamentally this is what is known as a revenue seeking law the purpose of this law is that the country's exchequer needs revenue and there is no other purpose for this law there are various ways in which you can understand that this is a revenue seeking law the first way you can understand this every exemption will have the word whichever is less whenever we are speaking about the exceptions we will use the word whichever is less and whenever we are going to speak about taxation we are going to say whichever is more or whichever is higher okay so that is one place of uh, seeing apart from it suppose if you find a defaulter in this law there is no point in arresting him by that you are not getting any benefit or the revenue here it is when you go to the penalty classes when you prosecution is the last step you will go with this with this law this law will try to get the revenue out of okay get his assets attaches assets okay in that manner also you can understand that this is a revenue seeking law and there is a very clear terminology i am not worried about how you earn the income if you pay the taxes that is more than sufficient compliance okay a person who has been smuggling goods who has been kidnapping people and earning ransom if he has paid taxes for that this law will not punish him there are other laws of, to, to take care of him but as far as our law is concerned boss if you have earned the income pay the tax i don't mind how you have earned the income so in all this manner it is a revenue seeking law whenever there is a revenue seeking law whenever there is a revenue seeking law we should ensure that it is used in such a manner that it also acts as a motivation for a person okay all certain that paying taxes is a painful aspect paying direct taxes is a painful aspect for an assessee money going out of his pocket okay with little experience from your office with little experiences from various people you have met uh, in this uh, few years after starting your ca articleship you will understand that before paying taxes he has 1500 questions to you he has 1500 why should i pay what makes me to pay why is that uh, uh, in belgium there are the, if you pay taxes there will be the good roads will be there okay without even understanding you are comparing a, a, a country with a, a city in india okay you cannot compare belgium to india okay but they have they, they it's painful for them to take money out of their pocket and give so they will have so many questions okay at that time only they will talk about corruption at that time only they will talk about lack of infrastructure facility at that time only sir na sir advance tax cutting and so na ivula kekringa but you will understand that that is their nature we cannot uh, uh, we we understand their pain because money is going out of their pocket so we should have very many small small uh, aspects to pull them to motivate them okay truck <clears throat> you will all uh, uh, understand this statement now more than uh, uh, if i have repeated this in inter it is lic is 14 floors not because of lic but because of income tax okay <laughs> awareness of taking insurance and ensuring that their family is safe is of late developed to a larger extent but i will not say 100% 
So imagine 10 years back, 20 years back, every LIC agent had one thing to tell the assessees to invest or put take a policy. Sir, you will get income tax exemption. You will take income tax deduction. So people started investing. Even today, LIC has said that in the month of March, the collection is more than any other month. That's again a proof that uh, how far this acts as a motivation. Okay. So one example is LIC. Okay. Very many examples like this. You will obviously understand today if I give you this example that if you go and tell a person that pay 5000 as tax, just 5000 as tax or donate 25000 to TTD to, uh, to save that 5000, he will do the second. Okay, you have to donate 25000, you will get 50% of that, 30% you will be able to, he will do that. And he, have a, he has a very fantastic questions for which you never will have a counter answer, which will say that if I pay tax, I don't get anything. If I give donation to TTD, I'll get punyam. <laughs> you will never have a counter answer for this. You will, you cannot find a counter answer for this. So that again is, a, so use this as the law of motivation in the future classes when we uh, look into the aspect, I will tell you why I am not very friendly towards default tax return. Okay, I will, we will talk about it. Why I am not a, a very big supporter of 115 BAC is it lacks this law of motivation to a larger extent. Okay, but whereas you, uh, we understand that this is a very big law of motivation for us. <laughs> In your offices, how many of you have uh, uh, anybody from Big Force? Okay, so obviously you would have studied law. Okay, <laughs> income tax law. Okay, day to day you are referring to income tax law. You know that day to day you are referring. Okay, how many sections? sections <laughs> Okay, right. You know what is a chapter? How many chapters are there? Chapter is a group of items. Okay, similar items. A chapter can have single section. A chapter can have 25 sections also. Because similar things are grouped together. And that is what is known as a chapter. TDS. All the provisions will come under the same chapter. All the provisions will come under the same chapter. Exemption. All the 10 exemptions will come under the same chapter. So, chapter is grouping together. How many chapters are there for income? Okay, fine. Which is what is wrong? Okay. I understand it is five heads of income, not five chapters. The best way to uh, remember that or rather recollect it now is, you know what is deduction? You know which chapter? 6A. If five chapters is income, we are wrong because we have the introduction, the basis of the basics of definition, etc. We have exemption. We have a residential status, scope of total income as a chapter. We have the incomes, clubbing, set off, and then 6A comes deduction. So, income is not five chapters. Why I am saying this is that is how law should be read. Chapters does not mean headings. Chapters means all types of particular provisions are parked in that. That is why I will, uh, we will again tell you, I, when, I, uh, when I do those chapters, I will again tell you, sections are also built in that manner. If income tax law intend to give any deduction as a percentage of asset, 
they will park it in section 32. If income tax law want to give deduction as a percentage of asset, they will always park it under section 32. One, you know depreciation. Previously, there was something known as investment allowance. Okay. Previously, there was something known as beneficiary provision for manufacturing sector apart from the additional depreciation everything was parked in section 32 they will keep on adding to section 32 if they want to give the asset itself as a deduction they will park it in section 35 they will park it in section 35 that is why you will see scientific research also in 35 35 is a huge uh, discussion Many people will not understand why so many things are parked in section 35, which will include a preliminary expenses also, which is an asset. Any expenditure before commencement is an asset. You will see preliminary expenses also. You will see scientific research also. You will see skill development expenditure also. And you will see specified business also. Because in all these things, one common factor you will see is the cost of the asset itself will be given as deduction. So, a chapter or a section has a preamble. Not just the law alone has a preamble. A chapter or a section also has preamble. A simple section which is day to day used by you as a shield. Okay. Revise the return. Without a preamble, I will tell you. To err is human. To forgive is income tax law also. To err is human. Where any error or omissions are there, assessee should be given an option to correct it. So came this provision called revised return. Apriya use pandringa. Okay. We have that discussion separately. So every section has a priya. Sometimes uh, uh, some sections we will even see the preamble okay there are twin objectives of uh, uh, the classroom the, uh, primarily i am clear 60 plus is what i want to make you score okay there is a secondary objective also uh, i enjoy this subject like anything uh, for me this is uh, uh, it is more of teaching tax as a passionate thing so, uh, sometimes uh, uh, that passion, I want to give it to you also. Okay. So, at those times, we will deviate a bit and see why this section, what made them to bring this particular section and how it can, how they have brought around. There are a lot and lot and lot of internal stories. I will not uh, 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 give you all the internal stories, but sometimes those stories will be interesting. Anybody online has a... Online students, hope it's going without disturbance. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Okay, right. So, having uh, uh, seen the income tax law, you are seeing it in physical format or in the uh, virtual uh, e-format. There are two things known as internal aid, external aid. Aid means help. Okay. There are two things which are known as internal aid and external aid. Okay. First, let me speak about internal aid. That which is there within the law. That which is there within the law. Have you seen marginal notes? Have you seen marginal notes? Okay. I assure you all, you have seen it, but you don't know it is known as marginal notes. After writing a section, they will put a line under that, they will write something. How the section has evolved. How the section is now. Previously, the section was using such wordings. 
now they are using a different wordings that is known as marginal eight marginal eight okay or marginal notes okay by reading the marginal notes you can understand how the section has evolved so one of the best internal aid is marginal notes there are two types of sections we always understand this okay superior section and subordinate section okay superior section that which has an overriding impact subordinate section that which says that i am not the final authority there is some but some other section which is the final authority how do we know that whenever it is a superior section the wordings used is not withstanding okay not withstanding section 40 says not withstanding anything contained under 30 to 37 unless tax is deducted at source and the deducted tax is remitted into the government account on or before the due date of filing return expenses will not be allowed to the extent of 30 percent if the beneficiary is a resident 100 percent if the beneficiary is a non-resident okay this is section 30 uh, uh, so not withstanding 43b says not withstanding anything contained under section 36 bonus or commission will be allowed as deduction only if it is paid within the due date of filing returns not okay how do you say a section is a subordinate section Same as otherwise. Uh, no the wordings used is subject to the wordings used is subject to i am a subordinate subject to you fulfilling some other section i will be applicable subject to is the wordings they use for subordinate section subject to you fulfilling something else i will be acceptable so if you look at section 36 bonus or commission allowed as deduction subject to 43b employer contribution to employees welfare fund allowed as deduction subject to 43b so internally you can find in the law which is a overriding section which is a subordinate section which is a overriding section which is a subordinate section so subject to is the wordings which we have to look for whenever we are talking what is a proviso you all know that proviso is something carving out of that particular section majority of the exemptions will be said in uh, provisions wherever you see however this uh, okay provided okay this condition is fulfilled okay so that is known as a uh, proviso can i use the definition of other statutes normally not normally the definitions of other statutes are not to be used however where our income tax law has not defined something and the other law is more clear about it for example sale we take it from sale of goods law okay so in those circumstances we will be taking otherwise we will not be taking uh, okay any of the uh, things and with regard to the external source my dear friends with regard to the external aid or external source the one thing which can always be relied upon is the finance minister's speech <clears throat> okay the finance minister's speech will give us more clarity about why that section was brought around i will give you some of the when we go into the law i will give you some of the places where finance minister's speech has been taken as uh, a important aspect where finance minister has spoken something but law is having something else is also okay other and pan are interchangeable what does this mean wherever pan is uh, needs to be quoted you can quote other wherever other is quote need to be used 
you can cut pan pan and other are interchangeable idukku idan artham okay that's what it is said but in practice wherever pan is to be coated you can coat other reverse is not possible wherever you can coat other you can no no wherever you have to coat pan other can be coated cbdt followed it with a wonderful circular wherever pan needs to be coated if the assessee coats other understand he does not have a pan allot pan <laughs> okay so deemed understanding you need not have form 49 a for applying for pan when you want to coat the pan coat your other they will allot you pan okay so other and pan are interchangeable under the parliament less on the wordings how it becomes a law when it becomes the law how it changes okay uh, okay samayathla na marandu poi apdi recording la irukne abdala pesiduve okay in the section la okay micha section la personal story sollumbodu <laughs> okay right rules of interpretation you all know literal rule okay rule first thing is literal rule if the wordings are clear and non ambiguous use that don't try to interpret it tax needs to be deducted either at the time of payment or at the time of credit whichever is earlier however for salaries only at the time of payment okay i will give you a couple of examples audit fees provision what entry you will pass audit fees majority of the time what happens is especially when i am reading when i am uh, uh, questioning on accounts and other things uh, i question and immediately write the answer ena thappa soltinga okay audit fees to the audit firm to tds this is the entry you will pass tax has to be deducted either at the time of payment or at the time of credit to that representative personal account contract expenses all the provisions you make on 31st march you will pass this entry whereas for bonus what entry you pass bonus account debit to bonus payable you don't put two tds there bonus okay even though it is going to be paid during the occasion of diwali or during september <clears throat> you will not pass the entry okay bo uh, two tds here because it will be taxable to the employee not in the financial year for example 22 23 it will be taxable only in 23 24 when i pay it in the month of september 23 even though it is the bonus of 22 23 so this is an ideal example section 192 says tax only on the basis of payment are you clear march month salary i pay on april 3 my intention is not for this so i will deduct only in april i need not show the march month salary in my form 16 or in my income tax return no 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 don't go this is wrong literal interpretation that provision is for bonus leave encashment gratuity for all these things you need not deduct tax but this is march month salary it becomes due on 31st company's policy is to pay it on april 3rd or april 5th etc for that tax needs to be deducted in march itself literal construction 
it is there is no ambiguity at all but this became a very big case law in a city bank case where they said that we will deduct only in the month of april no there is a literal construction this is applicable only for these type of payments where there is an uncertainty on the time of receipt whereas salary is every month paid there is a certainty so it should be so that is what is also known as reasonable construction okay you cannot destroy the intention of the law you cannot destroy the intention of the law okay you can plainly and honestly construe it well you all know about the hayden's law what was the previous law what was the mistake in that particular law what remedy was taken how the new law is always has to be studied in that particular manner what was the law before the amendment what was the mischief or defect which the earlier provision of law did not have a provide a remedy and what was the remedy this is also known as hayden's rule which is a very popular case there harmonious construction if a provision is spoken about in more than one place if a provision is spoken about in more than one place to a larger extent we should give the interpretation we should follow it that both the sections are given effect to both the sections are given effect to do you have an example for me for harmonious construction okay all round our law there is one big example for harmonious construction that is annual general meeting agm has to be in every year the timeline between two agms should not exceed 15 months and it should be within six months from the end of the financial year so by conducting an agm before september you will be able to fulfill all the three conditions even though these are spread in three different provisions harmonious construction we should ensure that all these things are filled in in our income tax law when i come to section 37 i will speak about this harmonious construction how a circular a case law and a provision has given an harmonious effect too there is one other place which to an extent we will understand now but uh, more when we come to that section during the, uh, the the later part of this week there is a provision called additional depreciation there is a provision called additional depreciation you know what it is it is available to a manufacturing entity and you will get an additional depreciation of 20 percent plant and missionary enjoys a depreciation of 15 percent but a manufacturing sector uses it more and uses it in the initial year more so the finance minister uh, mr p chidambaram in his budget speech said that additional depreciation of 20 percent will be granted for plant and machinery used in the process of manufacture for manufacturing entities this is the budget speech income tax law incorporated in income tax law we always have this provision where an asset is put to use for less than 180 days half of the eligible depreciation can only be claimed so income tax law said if you have purchased it on or after october 4th and put to use in that year you can only claim 10 percent mm forgings the company said was finance minister promised to be 20 percent <coughs> additional depreciation to promote manufacturing sector why are you restricting it to 10 percent income tax law said i am not restricting to 20 percent 10 percent interpretation of law is if you are putting the asset into use for less than 180 days only 10 percent case went to supreme court supreme court said harmonious construction finance minister has promised 20 percent law is not wrong 
If you use the asset for less than 180 days, 10 percent. So, do one thing where only 10 percent is claimed in the first year, that is the year of addition, claim the balance 10 percent in the immediate subsequent year. By this, I am also not altering the law, I am also not. Uh, I am also recognizing the speech of the finance minister. Harmonious construction. Okay. We will study that when we come to section 32. Okay. So, this is an important aspect. In all revenue law, in all revenue law, wherever there is two possible view, that which is most beneficial to the assessee should only be adopted. That which is most beneficial to the assessee will only be adopted. <clears throat> Section 56, Lanama, we study gift in excess of rupees 50,000, where the value of gift exceeds 50,000, whole of that amount becomes taxable. The salary lower provision, perquisite valuation. Where employer provides gift to, to employee for a mobile phone or on special occasion for completing 10 years of service. Perquisite value up to 5000 is exempt. Where the value exceeds 5000, that there are two rules of thoughts now. Apply the same logic. Where the value exceeds 5000, whole of the amount becomes taxable. Where the value exceeds 5000, such excess alone will become taxable. We borrowed it from 56 and say, this is a rule of interpretation. Anna, exam, we will write it as an alternative opinion. Where there are two views possible, that which is beneficial to the assessee can only be taken. More than 5000 is only taxable. Here the intention is to give exemption up to rupees 5000 and tax more than 5000. Okay. Edges thing generous. Okay. Words which follow will take the character of preceding words. General words which follow will take the character of preceding words. Okay. Very basic example includes lion, tiger, elephant and other animals. Here I cannot give domestic animals as a, pet animals as example. When they, the previous words are wild animals, I can give wild animals all only as example. Okay. The best section that interpreted existing generates under income tax law is section 2, subsection 22, clause E. Deemed dividend. Any loan or advance given by a closely held company to a substantial interest holder is taxable as dividend in the hands of the substantial interest holder. We will see that. But coming back. Any loan or advance, what type of advance? Advance which takes the character of loan. Trade advance, we both are transacting. I am often purchasing from her. She is my company shareholder, <clears throat> voting more than 10 percent. And we are also in the debtor creditor relationship. She said that I need to pay some advance, trade advance or a, a credit advance so that she can go and purchase the goods and supply to me. I give her advance. This is not advance in the nature of loan. This is in the regular course of transaction. So this should not be understood as deemed dividend. Loan or advance, adjustim generis, advance in the character of loan should only be considered there. That is what is this common words meanings are. We have always found this word deemed as a very important wording in our tax law or any law. In our tax law, to enlarge the scope, 
and to give effect to the law deemed is used. Okay. Easily understandable, easily recollectable for you is deemed ownership in house property. Asset transferred to spouse without adequate consideration, the transferor is the deemed owner of that property. Because the front law, section 23 says, annual value of a property consisting of land and building shall be taxable in the hands of the owner. And owner is on title deeds. Abdina Lala Sultan. A person, today you can understand this example more clearly. I am, if you if more exceed 50 lakhs, you are coming under the 10% surcharge era. So let us understand that somebody is having 45 lakhs as income other than house property. And some 12 lakhs he is going to get as rent from house property in the year. He transferred the house property to spouse. As per the ownership agreement now, spouse is the owner of the. But for all practical purposes, he is the one who has funded the money. So the law said deemed. Deemed ownership. No, it will come and be clubbed in the hands of this deemed enlarges the scope of the law and also makes it clear on certain <coughs> things. Section 41, deemed income, business income, even though they, the, we, I will talk about it, okay. So, that will be taken as the deemed means supposed to be. The word deemed means supposed to be and it gives us a very comprehensive aspect of the and very clarity oriented aspect of that particular law. Am I clear to you my dear friends? Am I clear to you? All these rules of interpretation, harmonious constru construction, adjustive generis, when we go and see that particular section, again I will tell you, at that time I will tell you about and and or also, at that time uh, I will tell you about shall and may also. Okay. As I was telling you that <clears throat> income tax law is into 298 sections plus 14 schedules, approximately 23 chapters, okay. A chapter is one where you are going to get more clarity about particular, uh, all items falling under that things will be there, okay. The law, the law just speaks about, uh, okay, the law just speaks about uh, how to compute the income, tax liability, procedure of assessment, penalties, etc., Okay, right. May I know what is a charging section? Section 2 is definition. Each, each chapter of charging section. Each it's a, it's charging. charging section. That is known as computation. So, today we will understand. I will repeat it all through. Okay, so that you are very clear about what is a charging section? If rate is inherent in the section, that is known as charging section. We have charging in two places. Finance Act, Income Tax Act. The rates of taxation are contained in Finance Act which we call it as normal rates of taxation <clears throat> up to 250 mil more than 250 up to 5 lakhs 5 percent 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20 percent more than 10 lakh 30 percent is not there in income tax law it is there in the part one of the finance act what is the rate of ltcg 20%, not there in Finance Act. 112, Section 112 of the Income Tax Law says that. What is the rate of winnings? Not there in Finance Act. Section 115B of the Income Tax Law says 30%. So, 
So, if the rate is inherent in the section, remember that section is a charging section. 115 JB is a charging section. A company has to pay either normal tax or 15% of book profit, whichever is higher. 15% of book profit is not there in Finance Act. 115 JB defines what is a book profit and says 15%. You have to pay. From today, every day you have to, we will repeat it. Whatever falls under 115 is a charging section. 115 BAA, BAB, 115 BAC. Everything is a charging section. Okay. Whatever falls on one. Section 115A, first section itself is taxation of non residents. What are all the income? What are all the rates of taxation? And it goes on to uh, exit tax regime, etc. Whatever comes under one. So, what is a charging section if the rate is inherent? The only place where you will not find rate inherent is section 4, which says income will be chargeable as per the rate specified in the Finance Act. Okay. Section 4 is a charging section generally because it tells us it is as per the Finance Act. So, what is it? so this makes it important to understand the finance act or the finance finance bill ko act ko. what the finance minister reads in the parliament is finance bill once it, once it is passed and get got the president access uh, uh, president's acceptance it is known as a finance act okay finance act only consists of major things like rate of taxation TDS applicable in the case of rates of taxation, okay, especially and the, the aggregation of agricultural income. One other thing we will touch upon Finance Act apart from this area, which we will often touch upon. The one other area is equalization levy. When we do international taxation, we will understand equalization levy, which is part of Finance Act. That is not part of Income Tax Act, that is the part of Finance Act. Okay, first, first, when parliament was formed, when the Indian law was formed, there is a ground rule. Okay, today you might uh, uh, not uh, be very friendlier, it might sound little jovial also today, but the first line they used is parliament time is precious. Apo. Okay. Parliament time is precious. We should not discuss small issues in Parliament. Only larger issues should be discussed in Parliament. Routine, procedural nature should be given to subordinate organization. So came CBDT which is a subordinate legislation. Okay. Ipo, or example on this one. Income tax return, if it is part of act, or, or uh, we will talk uh, about a situation which is very, very hypothetical. Income tax return, if it is part of act, name, there are some 10 boxes. They want to add two more box. Wait. Parliament should be convening. In that parliament, this should be passed because you are adding two more boxes. And president has to approve it. Can parliament time be wasted? That's why subordinate legislation. In the, the rules in the salute. Act can only give the parent aspect. Procedural aspects will all be in rules. 
file your income tax return is what CAT will say. What information has to be produced in that? To claim this particular exemption, get a chartered accountant certificate. What information should be there in certificate? Okay. Rules are there which says that these are all the things upon which I am I'm giving this certificate. Okay. So, rules are the procedural aspects of law. And it is framed, uh, the power is given to CBDT to give rules, to give forms, to issue various uh, aspects. However, certain you are in your law, there will always be ambiguity. Okay. So came CBDT can clarify that ambiguity by issuing circulars and notifications, but they cannot change the law. It were case law, sir, which is fundamental thing. They cannot change the law, but they can give clarification for that particular law. CBDT can give clarification, okay, by issuing circulars and notification. Remember, circular is not for SSE. Only for the department. Circular is not for the SSE only. It is an internal document. Circulars are internal document which only binds the income tax authority and it will not be for the SSE. But SSE, if the income tax officer has not followed a circular, SSE can say, boss, you have a circular, you are supposed to abide by it. Vice versa, it's not possible. Income tax officer cannot say to the SSE, there is a circular abide by it. No, it is not binding on me. Whereas, I can't do that. Whereas, if the CBDT issues a notification, it is for all. It is for general public, etc. Okay. Majority of the time, notifications and circulars are interchangeably used also. <clears throat> but, there is a small line of difference. Pronouncement of the Supreme Court is as if it is written in law. Pronouncement given by Supreme Court will be as if it is written in law. It is binding on all people. There is no exception. The only way Supreme Court judgment can be reversed is by amending the law. By amending the law. Two. Tax and income under capital gain, two conditions are needed. There should be a capital asset, it should have been transferred. If, the, if these two conditions are fulfilled, you can tax an income under the head capital gains. One year silk mills, no case. My plant and machinery building got destroyed by fire accident fire accident i got everything destroyed insurance company paid me compensation so they said compensation is paid according to the current market price but whereas they are depreciated at a lower level so there was a gain that was arising income tax department said it is taxable one year silk mills argued, no, it is not taxable. Case went to Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, to tax an income under capital gain, there should be an asset. It should have been transferred. Where is the asset? Where is the asset? Is the insurance company having the asset? It got destroyed. How can you tax this transaction? It goes against the fundamental philosophy of the chapter, so not taxable. Highest ego, rubbing salt on their wound will become, they will become very white. They amended the law in the next budget. Transfer includes 
extinguishment of asset and the amendment is from 1st uh, April 1961. Retrospectively. <laughs> Retrospectively, they amended the law and nullified the whole judgment. Okay. So, that is why, uh, but generally, Supreme Court judgments are okay. So, when the uh, when this government took power in 2014, the then finance minister, Mr. Arun Jaitley, said, we will never make an amendment which will have a retrospective effect. We will never make an amendment which will have a retrospective effect. Trust me, from there till today, only 10 times they violated that statement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, right. So, Supreme Court judgments have the impact for all around the country. What about High Court judgments? Falling within that jurisdiction only. All assesses falling within that jurisdiction. Metra's High Court gives a judgment. We are all bound by it. Mumbai High Court gives a judgment. One of our friend is there, Hemnath, who is there from Mumbai, I think he's attending. Okay, for him it is applicable. Now, I can just quote in the court case law saying, Boss, Mumbai High Court has given this judgment. So, consider it. But it is not binding on me or my income tax authority. We will discuss about it when we come to it. But I don't know, I think you might remember Manchula Ajayshan or case capital gains. Numerator will be the year in which previous owner has purchased the property. That is a Bombay High Court judgment. But across India, we are following that judgment now. That is a Bombay High Court judgment. Okay. So, but generally, High Court is jurisdiction specific. Appellate Tribunal or Commissioner of Income Tax is assessee based, issue based. Uh, we will see that those things. As I told you, Section 4 is the charging section. Though even though rate is not there, the wordings are so. Okay. Taxes on every person. Tax is chargeable on the total income. Tax will be levied in accordance with the provisions contained at the rate specified in the annual finance act. Here, the rate is not here, but the, they have used, referred to the finance act and said section 4. Apart from section 4, there are very many sections like 111A, 112, 112A and the streak of section 115, which are also known as the charging section. Am I clear to you? Okay, a quick read through, please. A quick read through, please. Circulars and case laws are external aids, not part of. Okay. Shall I move on? Okay. Right, so per day, 100 times, some two years of articles, okay. So, some 7,000, 8,000 times you would have listened to the statement who is an assassin? You have listened, assassin, assassin, assassin. Who is an assassin? Sir, are you an assassin, sir? Raja, are you an assassin? Are you an assassin? Why you are? Why you say you are not an assassin? Not a liable to pay tax is an assassin. Is not an assassin. Is not an assassin. The first criteria for an assassin is. He is liable to pay tax either on his income or 
on some other person's income for which he is responsible to pay tax. Okay, right? I'll slowly extend this definition. Slow, let's go very slow. <clears throat> Assassin is some person who is liable to pay tax. Kandipa Assassin. He is liable to pay tax on some other person's income. What are we speaking about? Representative. We are not speaking about clubbing. We are speaking about representative assessing. Mr. X dies. Till the date of his death, he has earned the income. Legal representative, if Mrs. X is alive, she has to file the return of Mr. X even though she might not have any income. Representative assassin, non-resident, agents of non-resident, representative assassin. Okay, we will see it as we go by. So, on the other person's income, you are liable to pay tax. Remember, interesting aramikum. Assassin means a person from whom any tax or any other sum of money is payable under this law. Abhina? Any other sum of money is payable under this law. You are not liable to pay any tax, but you are filing your return late. 234F comes to you. You are liable to pay some fee. 234F is not on tax due. 234F is flat of 5000 rupees or 1000 rupees if they are total. You are liable to pay. Are you understanding? 234F is one example where any other sum of money. That is not an example. I want you to understand the larger example of it. I am an individual not liable to pay any tax. My income or my profit has not exceeded 2,50,000. I am not liable to pay any tax. I am not an assessee according to that particular. But I paid some payment to him on which I have deducted tax at source. This I have not remitted to the government account. I am not liable to pay tax. I am not liable to pay tax. Okay. But I have deducted. I have deducted some tax at source which I have not remitted. Assessi is one from whom any tax or any other sum of money. She said, interest or penalty or I told you fees. Idu TDS, which I am supposed to remit, I have not remitted. Any other sum. I become an assessi. I become an assessi. Any other sum of money. Okay, I am not liable to pay any tax. I am not liable for TDS. I am not liable for fees, anything. But I have received a notice. I am an assassin. Every person against to whom any proceeding under this act has been taken against his income or any other income. Okay. You are coming under the deeming provision, you are an assassin. Okay. If you have not complied with any part of the law, you, you are known as an assassin in default. Assassin means, okay, any tax or any other sum of money is payable. 99.99% of the section, after using the word means, they will somehow use the word includes. In the section, includes 
and includes okay any proceedings for, against his income or any other person's income or any sir no proceeding sir i am i have not directed tax at source anything etc but he has paid me some 1 lakh on which he has deducted some 10 percent as 10,000 as tax. Now, now, if I have to get that refund, I should become a necessity. If I want to carry forward the loss, I should become an assassin. None of these things are there. That's why you are all not assassins. Even one of these things present, you are known as an assassin. Rumba broader definition assassin, not a very smaller circle of tax paying people alone. Assassin includes if you want to get refund. Okay. So, Yanakur 3000 rupees refund. How uh, uh, the revenue seeking law works. I have 3000 rupees as refund. Claim I leave it. Now I have to pay 2000 rupees as fees. Because if I don't file my return, 234F says 5000 is the fees. Two years back, refund tax return file notice of them. Okay, I have seen people who are just have to get a refund of 300, 400, but ultimately end up paying 600, 700 because the 1000 rupees there, they would have income would not have exceeded 5 lakh. Yes, and the 300 rupees because still there is a fear, still there is a worst fear. Pan wang in an assassin, income tax file. This in, the, in spite of so much of literacy, we still have this fear going around the literate population. Who feels if we get pan? Today, without pan, you cannot be you can for any payment. So, even if you have a credit against the pan, income tax department is trying to understand whether that person has, to whom this credit is available has filed his return. If not, they send a notice. Once a notice is sent, you become an. We know we are going to study assessment in detail. And a person includes individual, HOF, company, which includes foreign company also, firm, AOP, BOI. Local authority, artificial juristic persons like trust, cooperative societies, educational institutions, all these things will fall under this. Either than assessment, all these things we will study in assessment. For all these persons, there is a method of computing their residential status for individuals, companies. HUF, those things are there in international taxation for us. Computation of residential status is not direct taxation now. It is forming part of international taxation, especially POEM guidelines, place of effective management for companies are all there in international taxation. So we will study about it there. In the concept of Munadi, one of the stunning amendments of 2023-24. For all of us sitting here, the financial year is 23-24. What is the stunning amendment that came into? Ur Vartha made every difference. Till 22-23, there is something known as normal regime something known as optional tax regime. Optional became 
and normal became optional. How they made it happen? How they made it happen? Anybody online can also answer me. By usage of this terminology called default. If you are silent, you are falling under 115. If you want to choose, choose now. The finance ministry used a very intelligent terminology saying 115 BAA, BAB, other than two companies, 115 BAC, individuals, 115 BAD, BAE, cooperative society, are known as default tax regime. If you want to opt out of default tax regime, specify. Which means if you are silent, your fullest effect is in 192. Employers are told, if the employee has not given any declaration, till last year, if the employee want to opt for 115 BAC, he should specify. Now, if the employee has, the, has said nothing, you assume he is under default tax regime. D by default, he is falling under 115. If the employee comes to you and tell, no, I am not going to follow default tax regime. I am only going to follow uh, the normal tax regime. So, normal became optional. Optional became default. Okay, that is the major wording which had a very, 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 very greater impact now. Okay, so normal tax regime, default tax regime. Am I clear to you? Just a moment. We will see down in that, uh, that, that you remember. I haven't written it as a concept, but as we go by. Okay, and everywhere you are going to study, Payment otherwise than by approved modes. 40 A3 matra in reference. No more, it is just restricted to 40 A3. It is there all through the law. Capital gains. According to section 50C. Full value of consideration will be actual consideration or stamp value, whichever is higher. Stamp value on which date depends upon whether the assessee has paid advanced by approved modes or not. Section 56 Whether advance is paid by approved modes or not. So, this approved mode is now popular. Section 32. <clears throat> Asset in excess of 10,000 should be purchased by paying in approved modes. What is approved modes? That list is bigger. What is non-approved modes? Only three things. Cash, bearer check, cross check. Okay. Acceptable modes and non-acceptable modes are cash, bearer check, cross the check. Remember, cross the check is otherwise than by approved modes. Okay. Supreme Court interpreted in a case law that people were always thinking cash and bearer check was only the uh, unapproved modes. Supreme Court said, there is a difference between account payee check and cross the check. Now, even if account payee check, only he can present it in his account. 
I give him a crossed check, he can endorse it to him. Okay? This is the difference between cross check and account payee check, which till that judgment I also don't know because in inter I also left in choice negotiable instrument act. Okay? So I was also not aware of it till the Supreme Court said, what is the difference between a cross the check and an account pay check? Cross the check can be endorsed. So cross the check became an... Now all these things, uh, debit card, credit card, IMPS, UPI, all these are approved modes where there are track, trackable and other things. With, uh, these three things are unapproved modes. You all know that audit completion date is one month prior to the due date of filing returns. One month prior to the due date of filing return, they use the word specified date for this and for this they use the word due date of filing returns. Whenever they use the word specified date, they mean about audit filing date and uh, due date of return as 31st and for transfer pricing cases, okay, it's 30th number, I'm sorry, 30th number and the other thing is July. Am I clear to you? Am I clear to you? Okay. <clears throat> what is income? How do you say a particular thing as income? You withdraw money from bank. Is it an income? No. It is not an income. Leave your own withdrawing your own money. Your father gives you some money. That's different. But your father gives you some money to spend. Is it an income for you? No. Income means money should generate from an external source. One cannot earn income from himself. Money should come from an external source. A person cannot earn income from himself. This is the fundamental concept. Because this concept leads us to this discussion. Okay. You are in an, let us take that there is a Bharatwaj apartment. You are all there in that apartment. There are 10 houses. Okay. Each house contributes 1000 towards maintenance. Each house contributes rupees 1000 towards maintenance 10000 per month is it an income to the person to whom it is being contributed the answer is no we call this association as mutual concern we call this association as mutual concern. Okay. We call this association as <coughs> mutual concern. Aprina, where? Members contribute, spend for a common purpose and the surplus available is for, a, is for members. It is known as mutual concern. Repeat. Who is contributing? For what purpose it is spent? Members for co common. And if at all there is any money left, it belongs to the members. You, uh, the watchman has to be paid some 6,000 rupees. 
you cannot say on first day lr weekly in poi kadavu 30 100 rupees vaangiko you collected the watchman is for all the 20 houses 30 houses what about this similarly various people uh, uh, some uh, common area has to be cleaned you collected you clean the common area so it is also spent for the members and if at all there is any surplus it is available only to the it is known as a mutual concern income is not generated from an external source it is not a taxable entity where collection is from members spent for the common purpose of members and the surplus is also available for members it is known as a mutual concern okay every month you subscribe you are understanding right every month you subscribe okay you have a residential apartment hundreds and two hundreds of residents they subscribe to the common fund the roof has been let out to Artel for putting their tower Artel pays rent is it taxable yes because it is coming from an external, external source inside the apartment very often you are organizing some exhibition any person can put a stall by paying a sum of money Excellent. it is coming from an external, external source clubhouse swimming pool to be used for members not taxable if any external person uses the clubhouse for conducting some function it becomes taxable because it is now given to an external person so the amount received will become taxable are you understanding okay anything from an external source is taxable idhila or famous judgment bangalore club nu or judgment old judgment but it is a very interesting judgment state bank of india occupied the ground floor they paid a subscription is it taxable they pay there was a ground floor and over that 100 apartments ground floor was occupied by state bank of india they paid a subscription as the member of that cooperative society is it taxable whatever money collected was deposited in state bank for which they gave interest bangalore club contended is a member ten was not taxable 80 percent of the case laws within no time you will give the answer it went up to supreme court okay other number legal system within no time you said taxable it took so much time for the Supreme Court to, to tell them, boss, they contributing as a member is different. They contributing in the capacity of banker is different. Subscription, because they are member, they give. Interest, not because they are member, they are giving. It is a, it is for that purpose, they should be, can be considered as an external source so mutual concern okay or where they are common contributors and the surplus is available for them okay in a year's time you will pay start paying membership fees to ICAA ICA mutual concern ah? yes, section 8 company where mutual concern ah? yes. 
Surplus is not available to practice surplus Supreme Court bind nothing in our case. BCCI called themselves as trust. In that sort of non-profit organization. Okay. It's a little another. Anga the condition though members only contribute. The real conditions. Thiruchirappalli Bus Transport Corporation no or case law, prior case law. Those who are Bus Owners Association of Thiruchirappalli form, they only contribute. Fine. Spent for common purposes, surplus, they are a mutual concern. Flood and war one they contributed to Prime Minister's National Relief Fund 5 lakhs. Tax fund on income tax. This is not spent for common purpose. Common purpose then. Unke area will clean butter. Ungludia bus, Ungludia watchman. So bus related or something. When you contribute to an external beneficiary, that means whatever you received becomes income. You cannot have an external beneficiary, however genuine may be the case. So, three conditions are required for mutual concern. We will again study it in cooperative society. Okay. Generally, the surplus derived from mutual permanent is not taxable. Therefore, a trade professional where functions of mutuality, mutuality means received from members, spent for members, surplus available for members. However, in the following cases, mutual funds are taxable where income does not come from members, where mutual concern aims income from both mutual and non-mutual, exemption only applicable for mutual activity. Insurance businesses, and as I told you, either than a CA institute lying over, there is no principle of surplus sharing, so mutuality will not be there. Am I clear to you? Okay, right. Concept of financial year, previous year, and assessment year, we all know that, and for all of us in this classroom, 23-24 is our previous year, the provisions we are studying, 24-25 is our assessment year, okay, right, in extreme cases, I will not, the assessing officer will not wait for the previous year to get over, he will tax the income immediately, the extreme cases include non-resident shipping business, which we will be studying in international taxation, that it will be taxed immediately. Persons leaving India, I need, I cannot expect him to come back and pay the taxes, so I will tax him immediately. Suppose the reason for formation of an AOP is over and they are going to be dissolved, the assessing officer having knowing it, Okay, will not wait for the year to get over and will be taxing it immediately. And any person who is trying to transfer asset in our, because I know finally I am going to take possession of the asset, make a charge on the asset, okay, confiscate the asset. So knowing that he is trying to transfer the asset, then I will not wait for the year to get over. I will ask him to pay tax immediately. And discontinuance of business. That is, if a business is discontinued during the part of the year, you can tax them immediately. Apart from this, previous year is assumed in certain cases. Previous year is assumed in certain cases, which is unexplained cash credit. In your bank account, I find a credit of 10 lakhs. Obviously, it's your income. I ask you what is the source of it for which you are not able to explain me. In the version credit, that is income. 
you cannot content no sir this is earned over 10 years 1 1 lakh i was keeping on accumulating whichever year i found that there is a credit in your account i will tax it okay unexplained cash credit okay is 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 sort of an income in the hands of the sc these are taxable at a higher rate okay idella <clears throat> mostly nam epo padiponna search and seizure raid cases la idella romba popular unexplained cash credit unexplained investments the year in which i identify the investment the year in which you have made the investment i will assume it the income of that year unexplained money which is available in you and investments not explained fully also unexplained expenditure where assessing officer comes to know that you have made a huge expenditure and you are not able to offer the source from which that expenditure is made the year in which you made the expenditure i will take it as the income of that particular year i will not uh, wait for the uh, some other year remember section 115 bbe one example where section 115 nale the charging section down okay is taxing it at 60% plus 25% plus 4% these are taxable at 60% plus 25% idha thavara penalty um irukku just read through just read through இல்லாட்டி <laughs> 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 okay these are rare questionable areas 68 69 in a total comprehensive question it can come stand alone these are rare questionable area interpretation of statutes is more for the law related questions since law is taken out of uh, final probably engayadu romba rare or marking varla but these are rare questionable areas one advantage and disadvantage is 70 marks huge area of coverage so some areas they don't even look into or touch upon okay so don't worry about previous year assessment year the shipping business persons living those are all very very rare questionable area for every class from now on we need this basic what is tax though 
assessment of companies la we will study about taxation of company tax computation of company similarly from firm similarly for individual but front la we will understand this once so that if a pgbp la there is a question how the tax has to be worked out you need to know fundamental chapter wise in detail we will study about the tax rate at that time how the tax rate varies but generally on a overall basis let us understand the rates of taxation this time in your notebook in your notebook please Though it's for AOP, BOI, artificial. Now I take it as individuals. Okay. And now the most important thing which you have to understand is under optional tax regime, what was normal became optional. What was normal became optional. Please remember under optional tax regime okay we are writing it because it is important and we will uh, do it again in assessment of individual okay level of income actually optional huh? optional uh, two years maximum if the same finance minister comes, he will make 115 BAC yes, as more mandatory tax. And savings and a disown panamudiman and we'll speak about it. Okay. Particulars, individuals below. 60 senior citizens so senior citizen is one who is 60 to 80 super senior citizen is more than 80 basic exemption limit is two lakh fifty thousand three lakhs five lakhs basic exemption limit is two fifty three lakhs five lakhs Kanan? senior citizen is writing three lakhs three lakhs five lakhs bl two Five lakhs, five percent, five percent not applicable. Okay, five percent, five percent not applicable. Five lakhs to ten lakhs, twenty percent. Five lakh one, yeah, taken. Okay, more than ten lakhs. This is now optional tax regime. If you are following 
optional tax regime these are all the rates of taxes applicable for individuals okay individuals alone we will write it once companies and all we are going to see but individuals later paka poro adnala oru vaati ezhudindralla okay right so actually what we will uh, we will in the practical working how we will do is up to 1 lakh we know what is the tax up to 10 lakhs okay up to 10 lakhs of income here it will be 1 lakh 12500 here it will be 1 lakh 10000 here it will be 1 lakh okay up to 10 lakhs of income suppose if somebody says 12 lakhs how we quickly do is 2 lakh into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12,500 okay that's how we work okay 2 lakh into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12,500 okay The basic exemption limit is up to rupees 3 lakhs. The basic exemption limit under default tax regime is up to rupees 3 lakhs. And then every 3 lakh increase. Okay. 3 lakh 1 or now I write it as 3 lakh itself. You know it is... Uh, Five percent six lakhs to nine lakhs ten percent nine lakh to twelve lakh fifteen percent twelve lakh to fifteen lakh twenty percent more than fifteen lakhs. Are you understanding? Okay. So, here, if I say income as 17 lakhs, 2 lakhs into 30% plus 1 lakh 50,000. 2 lakhs into 30% plus 1 lakh 50,000. 
what are all available not available we will go and see in those respective sections as of now this is the default tax regime income the next major change happened in rebate rebate under section 87e remember this default tax regime available for individuals majorly uh, others also but majorly for individuals does not distinguish senior citizen super senior citizen and all 3 lakhs is the basic exemption limit even if you are a 80 year old super senior citizen it does not change anything okay and the next major thing happened in rebate. Normally, rebate is available for an individual whose total income does not exceed 5 lakhs normally. And the rebate is actual or 12,500, whichever is less. Under the default tax regime, under the default tax regime, rebate is applicable if the total income does not exceed 7 lakhs and quantum of rebate is actual tax or rupees 25,000 whichever is less along with the marginal relief provision for rebate marginal relief provision for rebate which means under the Present optional, which we call it as normal, income 5 lakh 1000 na, no rebate. 12,500 plus 1 lakh 1000 into 20%, 200, 12,700 plus HEC, you can cut it down. 5 lakh variko rebate. 5 lakh exceed panit na, no rebate. Inga, if it exceeds 7 lakhs, you can claim the rebate to the extent of that difference. <clears throat> Concept of marginal relief, which is normally available only for such charge, is now provided to rebate also. We will see that. We will see that. Okay. In the practical handout which I have given you, okay, whenever you are free, answer the unit 1, uh, module 1, and that is just, uh, I have given you some questions on MCQ basis. Go to page number 4. Go to page number 4. Taxable income from salaries 7,15,000. Compute tax under both normal as well as default tax regime. Normal is easy ease of understanding. It is now known as optional tax regime. The normal which we call it till the last year because now we yet to get uh, uh, fully do with our uh, the word optional. You know, if optional use panna, our mind will immediately think 115 BAC because till two months back the term optional only means 115 BAC. It is changed. That's why I am just using the word normal. Okay, right. Gross income, sir. No, uh, taxable income. Net. Net. P 
base tax will be 215,000 into 20 percent plus 12,500. 215,000, okay, 215,000 into 20 percent, okay, plus 12,500. Repeating. Just a minute, I'll come. Use something to PC, sir. I'll just. The special rates of taxation remains to be the same for all levels of assessing. I mean, page number 15, okay, you can see the special rates of taxation, section 111A, that is STCG on which STT is paid 15%. Section 112A, LTCG on which STT is paid First to 1 lakh not taxable, balance is taxable at 10 percent. Section 112, other LTCG 20 percent. Winnings is taxable at 30 percent, including the winnings which has been introduced in the law this year. Okay, when I give you the soft copy of the material, complete material, whenever there is something in blue, it is an amendment. Whenever you see something in blue in the soft copy, it is an amendment. So, in the bottom most part of page number 15, you can see 115 BBJ net winnings from online games is also 30%. Okay, just now we saw undisclosed income is taxable at 60%. This special rate is for all SSEs. This special rate is for both the tax regime. Whether it is optional or default tax regime, the special rates remains to be the same. Surcharge remains to be the same. HEC remains to be the same. I mean question number 2. In page number 4, LTCG on sale of jewellery, on top of it I have given, it's for resident individuals, we are computing. Question number 2, LTCG on sale of jewellery, 6,50,000, compute tax under the both the systems. <clears throat> Before progressing, please understand. Before progressing, please understand. Where assessee does not have any other income, or income taxable under slab rates is lesser than basic exemption limit, the deficit he can adjust it against special rates. The deficit he can adjust it against special rates. I don't have any other income. Up to 250, 
if you are following optional tax regime up to 3 lakhs if you are following default tax regime adjust it with the special rate and the balance is only taxable at special rate suppose i have 1 lakh adjust that 150 having said this though we are going, going, going to study this adjustment is not possible against winnings it is possible against 111A, 112, 112A. It is not possible against winnings. Are you clear? Okay, right. My dear friends, my dear friends, I can claim rebate here because my total income has not exceeded 7 lakhs. Whereas I cannot rebate, claim rebate under the optional, that is the normal tax regime, S12 normal tax regime. Okay. Less rebate under 87A. This can be claimed under default tax regime. This can be as the income has not exceeded rupees 7 lakhs. Why I am saying this is you have to understand. When I say income, I don't mean income taxable at normal rates or slab rates. I mean income. Rebate is available even for special rates, except uh, uh, okay. Winnings also rebate is available, except on the 115 BBE and the unexplained sources. Okay, other than that, rebate is uh, I mean uh, uh, the rebate provisions are available. Okay, 112A alone they are excluding from rebate, which we will see. So here I can claim 25,000. The biggest problem of uh, you all is all these things are done by software. Now you have to do it in pen and paper.
is the class understanding is the class understanding okay i'm going to the next level which is known as surcharge okay <clears throat> Three, four years back to remember tax rates it takes time now to remember surcharge it becomes a very difficult task okay surcharge again i'm restricting myself to individual as of now then we will see other entities up to 50 lakhs no surcharge listen once then i'll again go up to 50 lakhs no surcharge 50 lakhs to 1 crore, 10%. Surcharge is on tax. More than 1 crore, up to 2 crores, 15%. This is easy. More than 2 crores. Surcharge is 25%, but not a direct. Where? the total income other than dividend 111a 112a and 112 where total income other than dividend income stcg on which stt is paid ltcg on which stt is paid and ltcg exceeds 2 crores but less than 5 crores 25 percent on this such total income that is excluding that and for dividend and these three things it continues to be 15 percent 15 percent repeating repeating first 50 no 50 to 1 crore 10 percent 1 crore to 2 crores to uh, 20 10 uh, percent okay 15% sorry 15% where total income other than LTCG both types of LTCG STCG on which STT is paid dividend income exceeds 2 crores but not 5 crores 25% on such income and for these three four things it remains to be 15 where it exceeds 5 crores 37 percent and this is not applicable for default tax regime the finance minister has said under default tax regime the maximum surcharge is 25 percent only okay where the total income is more than 5 crores but the assessee opts for default tax regime it continues to be 25% and it will not have then excess 37%. So, indirectly forcing us to go for default tax return. Am I clear to you? Let's understand this elaborately but slowly. Question number three. Compute only under uh, optional tax regime. That's what I call it as normal now. STCG which is taxable at 15%. LTCG under 112 taxable at 20%. Business income taxable at normal rates. Okay.
my dear friends, my dear friends, 40 lakhs now, 40 minus 10, 30 lakhs into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12,500, 30 lakhs into 30 percent plus 1 lakh 12,500. It has exceeded 50 lakhs, so add surcharge at the rate of 10 percent. Surcharge is on tax. Normal default for the party lakhs, seven lakh will need to be. No, no, no. Is the class understanding? Okay, is the class understanding? Right. Question number four. Compute both under normal and default tax regime. Okay, the tax dividend income and business income. Very, very, uh, uh, because um, the office the physical apport. So, it is very important to understand how surcharge is computed for this. Okay. You can take your time to understand this and later also you can note it down. Dividend income Dividend income is not taxable at a special rate and all. It is taxable at a normal rate. Other than the challenge in two crore forty. My dear friends, two crore sixty six lakhs, two crore fifty six lakhs into thirty percent plus. 1,12,500. 2 crore 66 lakhs. It is not taxable at any special rate and all. It is taxable under normal rates. Slab rates. So, this will be this minus 10 lakhs plus 1,12,500. 2 crore 56 lakhs into 30 percent 
plus 1,12,500. The challenge arises here to compute the surcharge because for dividend, the surcharge is only 15%. For us, for the business income, it will be 25 because excluding dividend, it has exceeded 2 crores. Excluding dividend. Anna, ipo LTCG, STCG, tax because that is taxable at a special rate. The tax will be separately available to me, so I can do the tax, but here the tax is not so. So the law asked me to do a cross multiplication formula. If 77,92,500 is for 22 crore 66 lakhs, what is for 26 lakhs on that 15%? On the balance, 25%. On the balance, 25%. Add such charge. Please take your time to understand it. 15% on dividend tax, which is 77. 92,500 divided by 2 crore 66 lakhs into 26 lakhs into 15 percent into 15 percent once more this divided by this into this on this 15 percent. I have to the minus one. Are you clear? Are you clear? So you can see a person earning 266 pays 1 crore and surcharge will become 37% if it is more than 5 crores. So, normally the IPL auction, 
or 10 crore. Uh, if somebody plans for 10 crores, that's all. They go back with a uh, 47% income only. 43% is their tax. Okay. Interest lang correct pay pan lena, are they 50% of the room? Once upon a time, our tax rates were 55%. That is before Manmohan Singh took over as finance minister. 55%. Uh, as a is represented to the income tax department, we'll do one thing. You keep the income, we'll keep the tax. Okay. Same under optional uh, uh, default tax regime. Here, we all know that we just saw here, you can see that up to 15 lakhs, it is 150. Okay, up to 15 lakhs, it is 150. So, I will reduce 15 lakhs and add 1 lakh 50,000. I hope online students you are able to follow. Online students. Yes, sir. Thank you, Deepika. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Online games like basic exemption and adjustment. Correct. 
difference if it is 3 crores if it is 3 crores what happens is surcharge is 25 percent for this and for these two things 15 percent and section 112a first to 1 lakh will not be taxable first to 1 lakh will not be taxable remaining 24 lakhs is only taxable Check it out.
Are you understanding this? Are you clear? You can just take down the answer that's enough more than enough if you have understood the concept need not rework the whole quantum Sir, slab rates low on one to five hundred. Sir. <coughs> Sir? Sir? Yeah. 
sorry friend uh, sorry yeah ask your doubt So slab rates low one one two five hundred. I didn't add that. Amam slab rates low one one two five hundred. Two crore ninety lakhs. This is slab rate working. Ah, uh, no, no, sorry, I didn't check that. I didn't check that. My bad. Sorry. Am I clear? Am I clear, friends? Okay, okay. Let's move on. Now, this is the uh, case which is important, which is the amendment also. Okay, where the income is six crores. Where the income is six crores. Now, under the optional tax regime, which is erstwhile normal tax regime, now it is known as optional. 37% will be the surcharge, whereas under the default tax regime, 115 BAC, the surcharge will not exceed 25%. For the other two, 112, it will be 20% tax, 15% surcharge. 55 lakhs, 112A, first 1 lakh is not taxable, remaining 54 lakhs into 10%. And the surcharge is going to be only 15% under both the regime. Under where the total income other than 111A, 112, 112A and dividend income exceeds 5 crores. Surcharge is 37% under uh, uh, the present optional tax regime which is known as the normal tax regime till last year. And the default tax regime less surcharge continues to be 25 percent, there will not be an increase.
you just copy it i'll work on the other things This is under default tax region. You can see the remarkable difference between the two. Okay, close to 23 lakhs of difference because of such, not because of that slab. Slab is a smaller thing. The surcharge saving is going to be huge. Here it was 65 lakhs, whereas it was only 44 lakhs under the default tax region so uh, so uh, first uh, the finance ministers or the government's thinking is migrate the high net worth client to 115 bac default tax regime okay e, not only here all through the law i will tell you how high net worth clients are becoming more prone to taxation or slowly withdrawal of exemption this uh, so ATC itself is an example. Ten percent only you can pay the premium. Twenty percent, one twelve munna dinda. Ipo ten percent only. Where it exceeds ten percent, not only ATC is a problem. When you get back the money, that is a problem. The maximum amount you are investing in PF should not exceed a particular limit, two lakh fifty thousand. More than that, you are going to either. So like that, there are lot of spaces. All through the law where high net worth individuals are now not getting the benefit or the taxes are high. So, in this default tax regime, we are first the intention of the ministry is let us migrate those high net worth to default tax regime. Obviously, it's a huge saving for them. Huge saving. Okay. Uh, so, they will first migrate. Then, 1 crore to 5 crore of the migrate panwanga overall migration that's why he said two three years it will be only default tax region
we'll continue tomorrow morning with the same uh, some more computations and uh, more uh, uh, computations on companies we'll see the introduction and then start with pgbp tomorrow morning the the screen will be visible you can continue to see this